So this video came about because in one of my previous videos, Noelle the Book Rook, your friend and mine, made a comment that she would really appreciate a tips video. Noelle has been on the fence, on the edge of jumping over to start her own booktube channel. She's an Instagrammer, so she's already out there. Um, but, you know, we've been talking back and forth, and she's in several of my reading groups and buddy readers and all that. So, you know, from one newbie to a new potential newbie, um, here are some of my tips and tricks that might be helpful. Hey, Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. This is my... Um, my laptop is over there and I have a list of things, so that's why I'm looking that way. I don't even know if you guys care or why I have to explain myself. I don't have to explain myself to you. Anyway, <laughs> like I said in my intro, I've got a list of newbie booktuber tips and tricks of the trade. I've been doing booktube for almost, almost a year and a half. So it's like a year and four months, I think now. Um, and so I'm still new, but I definitely have gotten a lot more comfortable with myself and my presence on BookTube. And I think I have some pretty decent tips for anybody that's considering it, like Noelle and uh, maybe some others. So let's, let me, let me sh share with you some of the things that I wrote down. Okay, so what are you going to film with and what are you going to use and what's your equipment going to be? film on your phone. I have an iPhone 11 and it's got a great camera front and back. There's nothing more that I need because I'm not a professional photographer and this is not a professional endeavor. This is a hobby. And so most cell phone cameras these days are fully capable and sufficient for what we're trying to do here, especially if you're just starting out. Don't spend any money on camera. Um, all cameras, typically Android and iPhones, come with editing software built in. I use iMovie. I think the Android version is called Movie Maker. Use that. Don't go and, and think you have to learn some highfalutin editing software. Don't think you have to buy anything. Um, the best way to figure out how to use those apps is YouTube tutorials. And in the year that I watched BookTube, um, and then when I was considering taking my own dive off the board, I started looking up on YouTube how to edit it and what, what are the best programs to use. There's a lot out there and there's a lot of different types of programs. But quite honestly, iMovie is pretty basic, but that's all I need and I, I know what I'm doing now. I went online, I got the tutorials, I compared different things. And that's all I do. That's all I use is my phone and iMovie. Um, don't invest a lot right off the right off the bat. The only thing that I would suggest, again, I'm looking at my list. Um, one of the best things that I did invest in is a really cheap tripod. I think it was less than 20 bucks. And I'll put a picture here. Um, it really makes things convenient because you can leave it up if you have a corner you can stash it in. Mine folds up, so I fold it up and I put it away. It takes me five minutes to pull it out, less than that, and set up my camera. I leave it at the same height. It's good to go. It's quick and it's easy, so I would definitely suggest you spend 20 bucks on that. Camera angle. Camera angle can be important. Um, depending on how you want the actual video to look. This is going to be embarrassing, but I'm going to show you three pictures. When you're setting up your phone or your camera, you can put your phone looking at you from below. You can put your camera, camera looking at you straight on, or you can put it angled a little above you. So the first picture is what I look like when my camera is looking up at me. Not pretty, is it? <laughs> Okay, second picture is if my camera is looking straight on me. And yes, I know there's a mess in the background. My laundry room. And then the third picture is the camera up fairly slightly above me and angled a little bit down. And that's me looking up just a tiny bit. I think number three is way more flattering. And so it just takes a little bit of practice. It, 
it, it also depends on how close you want the camera to you, how much of yourself you want to put on your video. I experimented with a bunch of different angles and distances, and I kind of like this one. I like, you know, my shoulders up. I, I try not to cut off my head. I have done that several times, and I've also done, I've had it too, I've had the camera too high so that when I bend, my the bottom half of my chin is gone. So it's just it's just experimenting, but try not to get the camera to film you by the camera having to look up at you. It's not pretty. Okay, you guys, this is me. I'm in a different location because I stopped filming and then I realized I forgot something and I'm at my kitchen table because I'm at work. Like, yeah. Um, camera angle is important, but look in the camera. If you're using your phone and you're using your front camera, don't look at the screen. This is me looking at the screen. So it looks like I'm talking sideways. The camera <laughs> is, is up at the top of your phone. So look there, you're gonna be talking to a piece of black plastic, but that's where your camera is. Don't do this, do this. Um, sample a bunch of different locations around your house. Find one with the best lighting. I don't use artificial lighting as of yet. I, down the road, I've said this many times, I might buy a tri um, a ring light. And, you know, you can get one for anywhere from 20 bucks to as much as you want to spend. Right now, I try to use natural light. It's typically the most flattering, even though it's fickle and changes. And so I don't, almost never film at night. I have done a few videos at night that I know are going to look crappy or dim or too dark. That's okay. One day I may buy a ring light, but for the most part, I film during the day. And if I'm smart, I will film a couple of videos on the weekend so I don't have to do any filming during the week because I don't know what time I'm going to get home from work. I don't know what if it's going to be sunny that day. Whatever. This is going to sound very ironic, but the most important thing in videos and filming and video making is audio, audio, audio. Audio is crucial because if if a viewer can't hear you, you could have the best looking video, but if I can't hear you, I'm not gonna continue watching your videos. I wanna be able to hear you clearly. I can watch you if the lighting is a little dark. I can watch you if you're a teensy bit blurry. I can watch you if I don't particularly like your background. I will watch you if you are crystal clear audibly. If I can't hear you, if the volume is too low, or if it's too muffled, I won't continue to watch your, ch your channel. And if I'm subscribed, I will probably unsubscribe. Audio is crucial. Play with the volume on your phone or your camera. I have, I film my videos and then when I edit, I put my volume at 130%. And I have found that that just makes it sound clearer. I also sit fairly close to my camera. I'm about a foot and a half away. And I'm not a soft talker. <laughs> Talk more loudly than you think you're going to need to. And you can eventually learn to project. And I've, I've, I am no stranger to the microphone and I've projected in the past. And so if you think you're talking too loud, you're probably not. Before you post anything, make three or four short videos to practice, and you're going to be so embarrassed, you're going to laugh at yourself. If you have any helpers, they're going to laugh at you. Um, just do it anyway. Make make a couple of videos that are three or four minutes long. I The first three videos I made that were full length, I didn't post. They were garbage, so I, I threw them out. And finally, the next video, I said, screw it, I'm going to post it no matter how it looks. And that's the my first video that I posted. It wasn't great, and I didn't love it, but I did it because I knew if I posted it, I had to keep going. Once it was out there, it's like, there's no going back now, and I'll, I'm locked in. I'm doing this thing. And then a couple more little video tips. Um, if, you're, if you're talking about books, show the book. And... Um, Show, make sure that you frame yourself kind of off to the side. That's what I normally do. So normally I'm like this, and but straighter because I have my camera at a different angle. And then I will hold the, I'm going to grab a book. So normally I would do this. I would hold, I, I didn't read this yet, so you know what I'm doing. But I'm holding the book up so that the entire book is in the frame, as is my face. 
and I try not to do this because then it blocks the audio. But I'm holding the book up and I wanna make sure that the title and the author's name is is completely visible. I, I will often do this and my fingers will be over either the title or the author's name. So I try to do that. I try to grab the bottom corner or like the edges like this. Um, I don't know if you've ever noticed Sean the Book Maniac, he grabs the books like, like this. He's barely got a finger hold on them, but he almost never blocks the title or the author's name. So it just takes a little bit of finagling and, and playing around with it. Um, but again, if you hold the book up, this is probably six inches out from my face and it's like way in front of me. If I do this, the book looks tiny <laughs> and it's not that small. So I'm looking for a good balance. I'm looking for, it's basically the, the actual size. So this is kind of like right in front of my ear line. And that's, that's kind of where I want the book in the frame. If you're not holding a physical book, learn how to do picture in picture. So all I basically do is I download an image from the web of the book and I save it to my phone and I will do picture in picture. And you can play with the size of the picture. You can move it, you can frame it, you can blow it up and, and all kinds of things. And all of that stuff you can learn from tutorials. Okay, last couple of things. Um, decide how long your videos wanna be and have that as your goal. My comfort level is anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And there's going to be, you're gonna have exceptions. I have them all the time. I have a few very few that are less than 15 minutes and I have several that are longer than 20. My early videos were long and I had friends of mine tell me if you could shorten your time I'm more apt to watch them because I'm watching them as I'm cooking dinner or I'm getting ready for work. I had a friend who told me that if it's anything over 20 minutes she usually doesn't watch it because she doesn't have that much time so she's using small bits of time. I am really comfortable my 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 sweet spot is 18 minutes and so try to have that as a goal and practice talking practice what you're going to say don't be repetitive it will add time onto your video and have that as a goal to shoot for one of the first things that was going to stop me from posting videos was i kept thinking i'm not pretty enough for youtube <laughs> i have a face for radio <laughs> and it's silly because it is, that was just one of those, it's those insecure voices in my own head that was trying to get me to stop from even considering posting on YouTube. And uh, if you pay attention, there are YouTubers, there are booktubers of all different shapes, sizes, colors, genders. Everybody is out there. You think about your looks far more than anybody else does. And this face is is okay built for video. This little face is more built for a face only a mother could love. <laughs> Me in kindergarten. <laughs> All right, the next few, um, I'm going to sound like I'm lecturing you. Talk about what you love. Don't pander to anybody. And immediately go over to Barb's channel at the font and look at her video. Um, I think she wrote a video, should we post, um, should she, how did she put it? Should I post uncomfortable content or should I post videos I people aren't going to like? I will put the title here on the bottom in my text and I will put link her video down below. It's a must watch video and it brings up a lot of conversation. Do what you love. Do what you like to do. Post the videos that you want to watch that resonate with you and don't be apologetic for any of it. Mm, mm. Um, don't change your reading taste because of booktube. Don't start reading things that you think you're supposed to read. Don't start reading highbrow literature because you think that's what booktubers do or you want to seem smarter than you are or you want to impress somebody. Don't do that. Do exactly what you love. Read what you love. Do the content that you love and post it. Um, decide how many videos you want to do a week. What's maintainable for you? I suggest starting off with one video a week. Do a regular video, do it the same time every week because then people get used to your presence. And then you can decide, can I do this? Can I maintain it? Can I add a second video? I've gotten to the point where I'm comfortable with two videos a week. Once in a great while, I, I shift which days I post and I, I will post maybe a third shorter video. Once in a while, I'll do it. But 
Um, for me, I started off with one. I, my first video, my second video wasn't until two weeks later. I think I got sick. And then after that, it was typically once a week. So f figure that out, what you're comfortable with, how much work goes into making the videos. It's going to take a lot longer at first. Once you get into your groove, then you get to decide. Um, t keep a journal. Write down video ideas, video topics, tags. Write down tags that you really want to do. When you're first starting, nobody's going to tag you. They don't know you're there. So if you find a tag that you think is interesting, do it. And then make sure you call out the originator of the tag or whose video you saw it on and link all that stuff in the description. Um, comment on other booktubers' videos. I do that all the time. People do that for my videos. Comment everywhere. All the videos that you watch, comment, 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 even if it's just something, two sentences. If you really like their video, if you like their content, like it and comment because then people are going to get to know you. And if you have a, um, if you have a title, people are going to click on your channel and they're going to go to see, Hey, that's a, that's a new booktuber. Maybe I'll start watching her or him or, or them. Maybe I'll start watching their channel because they commented on this person's video. I'm going to check them out. Um, Privacy. If you don't think you have anywhere in your house to privately film a video and your family is going to point and laugh at you and they're going to make fun of you and you, you can't be yourself out loud, either find a spot or talk to your family. And I did both. At first, I was filming out in my common areas and my family thought it was a big joke and they were trying to distract me and make me laugh. And they did a few times. And then eventually I sat down with my husband and I said, listen, this is not that easy. So <laughs> please stop. And finally, he realized how much work I was putting into this. And he he's like, all right, we're going to respect your time. But actually, right now, I'm in a room with a closed door. So I have all the privacy I need unless someone busts in. And that's happened many times. Um, find somebody who you can talk to who will watch your video, a friend of yours or a family who will give you honest feedback. My oldest daughter was that for me. She's also a techie. She does production at her full-time job at her church. And so she was the one that said, Mom, you got to change your angle. Mom, get new light. Mom, don't say this. Don't say that. But she was giving me honest feedback. And then eventually I basically said to her, you got to let me do what I'm comfortable with. And she backed off and everything is great. This is not your job. This is a hobby. Do what you want. You are not here to do something for somebody else. You are not here to comply with what you think people are going to want. Nobody's paying you. Nobody gets the opportunity to boss you around. You can get all the criticism that they want to dish out. You don't need to take it and you don't need to do anything about it. Do you. You're not getting paid. They're not your boss. You do you. Be as engaging as you possibly can. Do what you love and people will come to you. If you build it, they will come. The very last thing is celebrate the small things. When I when I finally made it over 100 subscribers, I was so happy. It was like, this is so much fun. I can't believe 120 people like what I'm saying. I, I couldn't believe it. So I did my little party image and I did a video and I thought, this is great. I love this. Celebrate the little things. Have fun with it. Do it because you just are dying to be part of the conversation that you, it looks like fun. You get to talk about the books that you love. You can talk with your hands like I, I'm all, I'm doing all over the place. But, um, have fun with the little things. This is, this is supposed to be fun. Do fun. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Noelle, do your dang YouTube channel post something. You can do it. I will I will give you any more tips that I think of. There are plenty of other booktubers who have done videos like this, but as a fairly new one, these are I keep things as simple as I possibly can to make it maintainable and to keep it fun. That's it for me for today. I will probably see you on Saturday in my my bookish week video and uh, let me know down below if any of this was helpful, if you enjoyed it, what you thought. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, everybody. Bye.